Amazon recently released the Eero 6 Plus Mesh Wi-Fi system. I installed it in my home to replace my existing Google Nest Wi-Fi system. I wanted Wi-Fi 6, some improved bandwidth, and better smart home features than Nest provided. And while I did get that in some cases, not everything is perfect here, and you need to be prepared to set these up the right way. So I'll be giving you everything you need from the specifications and what you can expect for speed, alongside how you can prepare and how you can actually set these up in your home and manage them so they manage your network well. Hello automators, thanks for tuning in again. I'm Brian from Automate Your Life and one of the biggest ways that you can automate that life of yours is by getting a good high quality mesh Wi-Fi system to support the connection of your phones, tablets, streaming devices, TVs and computers. Plus if you're like me, many smart home products. The Eero 6 Plus Mesh Wi-Fi system can be purchased in groups of one, two, or three devices. You can add more if you'd like in the future, and the system works with the Eero app available on iOS or Android. They are named Eero 6 Plus because they support what's called Wi-Fi 6. Now you may or may not have devices in your home that can even use that portion of the Wi-Fi specification, but they're backwards compatible to everything else you have in your home. The speed rating that will be most important to you is that you can achieve 1 gigabit in terms of speeds from your internet service provider. That doesn't mean you'll have gigabit speeds throughout your entire home, but it is possible. Each of the nodes that you purchase have two gigabit ethernet ports on them. You can use either of them as a WAN port, which means it would go to your internet service provider, or as a LAN port that would go to two devices you want to wire into your network. The really nice thing is you don't need to tell the Eero app which you are using the ports for. The other speed rating that will matter to you is your wireless rating, which is AX3000. It breaks down to 500 at 2.4 GHz and 2500 at 5 GHz. Other important specifications include an 802.15.4 radio for Zigbee and or Thread smart home connectivity, coverage of about 1500 square feet per node, a 1 GHz dual core processor, 512 megs of RAM, 4 GB of flash storage, which Amazon will use for regular free security updates for its software for 5 years. The other important thing is that this system connects very well to Amazon's voice assistant and their Echo speakers to allow you to control things using your voice. And finally, because each node you purchase is a router, you don't have to worry about which one is placed where in your home as they're all exactly the same. Before you head to Amazon's web store and purchase some of these things, there are a few things you need to know or need to be prepared for. The first and most important thing is compatibility. Take a look at your home's existing modem and router. Many internet service providers give you a modem slash Wi-Fi router combo unit and you can't in most cases replace one of those directly with an Eero. My modem, for example, has fiber coming in and many of you will see either a coaxial cable or another form of cable coming into your home. That cable type traditionally has to go into a modem from your ISP. In my case, fiber went into that modem, which then converted it to an Ethernet cable, and I was able to use that to go to my Eero system. So you might need to have a conversation with your internet service provider before you purchase something like this. Those of you who own homes with really thick walls or heavy construction materials will already know that the 5 GHz signal for your Wi-Fi will really struggle to get around your home, and that's going to be the case with these, although the wired backhaul component will really help in this instant if you can get a wire between them. On that note, if you have a mesh Wi-Fi system now, your existing placements might not work or they might not even be optimized for this system. That's because each of these can deal with about 1500 square feet and they beam out in a spherical coverage pattern. When I spoke with the Eero support team, they told me about 30 to 50 linear feet was achievable with these and in my testing, that was very much true. Keeping in mind though that I have pretty basic construction materials in my home. 
nothing too thick or heavy. In fact, while I needed three Google Nest Wi-Fi points to cover my existing home reliably, I found I only needed two of these. Now, one of the big selling features is Wi-Fi 6. Unfortunately, most of us won't have a lot of Wi-Fi 6 devices as it's still relatively unused in smart products and sometimes still not even used in smartphones or tablets. For me, I only had two devices in the home that could use Wi-Fi 6 and I didn't see significant improvements in speeds. Now there's reasons for that and I'll get into it. Just don't go thinking that because you have this in your home, suddenly everything's going to be working faster than it was before. If you're like me and you're really building your smart home and you enjoy a lot of Wi-Fi devices in there, you'll need to think about segregating your network or maybe even stepping up. The reason I say this is because Amazon's recommending a maximum of 75 devices on each Eero network. They aren't giving exact guidance on how many devices can be di directly connected to just one of your Eero routers. And I've had upwards of 40 connected to a single node, but they are pretty firm about the 75 device limit. And while they say you could go a bit beyond, you're going to want to use some of the other smart home radios. This is one of the reasons that I really enjoyed Nest Wi-Fi because I never felt restricted on the number of devices. As they said, each node could handle about 100 each. And I really didn't run into restrictions no matter how much I threw on my network. And as I got close to 60 devices, I did experience some drops. It's fair to say that the number of drops of devices off my Wi-Fi lessened the longer the system was on. But for me, this is a long-term concern that will probably force me to do something a little bit different. There's actually a core piece of the Eero offering that it didn't really become clear to me until I got into the setup process. Now, they're offering a subscription service called Eero Secure, and I think it cuts in on what I would expect to be included in a mesh Wi-Fi system. I say that because it's going to cost in the US $3 a month to have content filters, as well as charts like your monthly usage rates or even your daily usage rates on devices and on your whole system. You can still get weekly charts for data usage and rates, but those content filters, which include applications and websites, will definitely cost you that monthly or yearly subscription. To me, a content filter is a basic feature of a router or a mesh Wi-Fi system today, and I don't see any reason other than trying to pump revenue up with a subscription for this to be an extra cost. Then there's a second tier called Eero Secure Plus. Scary enough, I don't have any issues with this second tier. I think it's the better offering because it includes a number of services that would cost you more money to get individually. I didn't sign up for all of those and test them all out, so take that with a grain of salt, but they are well-known services that you can find performance reviews of. Plus, if you already have one of those subscriptions, you can roll it in and convert it to Eero Secure Plus. I received a three pack of the Eero 6 Plus and this is what you get in the box. There's a quick card that tells you how to start plus a safety manual that tells you to keep them about a foot away from you at all times. Three Eero routers and they are all routers as we talked about and three 15 watt adapters that have a USB-C port. Then you get a fairly short Ethernet cable that is straight through. It's time to see a little bit of the how and a little bit of what these things can do. So I'm going to roll into a bit of setup, which you will see was incredibly easy. I have everything laid out. I have three of these power cords, an Ethernet cable and three Eero sitting here. Plus, I've got the installation card which tells you to get the Eero app for iOS or Android. If you already have it, they have a process for adding these new ones in to manage your network. So I'm gonna hit open on the Eero Home Wi-Fi system application. And you can see if you already have an account, you can start there. Or if you're new to Eero, we can use our Amazon account, which I think is gonna happen for a lot of us as these are going to pair very well with Amazon's voice assistant. So I've just signed into my Amazon account and they're going through the standard add your mobile number 
do all those extra things. I'm going to hit start setup. I haven't unplugged my existing router or anything. What's nice about this set is all of them have the existing two ports on them. So you don't have to worry about which one you're going to use for the gateway into your network or the router. They're also telling us to make sure we have Bluetooth turned on. We have our Ethernet cord and our power cable. And I'm going to hit start setup. They're being very specific with the process here, and I think it's to eliminate issues in every home. So they're saying first, unplug your old modem and old router from power. Then they're saying connect the Eero device to your modem using the ethernet cable that came in the box. You could have a different type here. So there are crossover cables and straight through cables. They want you to use this one. Then they want you to make sure your gateway Eero device is into a power outlet and then reconnect your modem to power. Here's my modem, it's sitting on the wall and yours is probably going to look a bit different, but you can usually trace out cabling up to your router. Now this is my router, it's a Google Nest Wi-Fi router that I replaced recently, but how did I tell this was my modem? I have fiber coming into my home and that's a fiber cable. Don't touch it, don't break it, be very careful with it, but uh, that's the incoming to my home. Now that cable is the one going to the router up at the top. So I unplugged my router and then when I started to look at the power situation for my modem, what I figured out was that the cable was sitting here, but my modem had a battery backup on it, and that's obviously been put in by my internet service provider, so I didn't pull that out. I plugged in my Eero, and then I plugged in the cable, because it was a straight-through cable that was coming from my router and going into my Nest Wi-Fi router previously. So I didn't exactly follow the instructions that Eero gave me, but you're going to want to try and follow their instructions for the most part. Now in the app, I had to let it look for the gateway and it found it within a few moments. So this was found really quickly, no trouble whatsoever. And now I have to give my Wi-Fi a name and a password. Now because I've already set up so many things in my smart home, I am going to use the same SSID and password so all my smart home stuff reconnects immediately. Now it's starting to set up the network with the credentials I've given. It's trying to connect to the internet through my modem. And now I get to choose if I'd like some software updates to automatically install on my Eros, which I'm definitely gonna do. It made a connection right away with my Amazon Miss A account, basically installed that skill on that account. So now I'm ready to place a couple more of these around my home, but we have to choose where to put these other nodes. And one of the things that I did is I plugged in the other network cable on the other side of my gateway Eero, that's allowing me to get out to the rest of my home with my wired network. So if you have a wired network switch, you can use that in the other side like I have. They've given us some really good tips here. Keep it out in the open and away from large electronics, appliances, or big metal objects. Things like your fridge or freezer or things like that. Those can easily block Wi-Fi signals. So if you're wondering where to place this, you can see that I have connected to the Wi-Fi already. So as I move through my home now, I'm going to be able to situate these fairly well. You don't want this going down too far, the little symbol here. If that's dropping down by more than half, you've gone far enough and you could get kind of dead spots or uh, connectivity that comes in and out between your mesh spots. So I'm going to go throughout my home now, find a spot for this one, plug it in, and then we're going to hit that. I placed this exactly where my previous mesh point was, but I probably could have gone a little further. I also moved away the oil diffuser just to put some spacing in between the two Wi-Fi devices. So I've located my next Eero, I've plugged it in. And now I'm hitting that and it's going to go searching for that device. The good news is they're checking out the placement for us. So 
we're not having to worry if we've done it quite right. They're gonna tell us how our mesh is performing. For me, this one's sitting in the living room, so I'm just gonna tap on that. Great news, they're saying we placed it in a really good location. I'm gonna try and locate the third one just because I want the third one located, not because I think I really need it here. I think my Wi-Fi is gonna perform adequately with these Eros just with two, but it doesn't hurt to have a third for that extra good coverage. The third mesh point I looked at putting behind my monitors on my office desk. Always keep points like this at least a foot to two feet away from yourself. And in the end, I actually moved this in order to create better speeds, which I'll talk about later in the video. So I'm gonna hit that it's in my office. At this point, I just have those three, so I'm done set up. They're gonna give me a quick software update or a firmware update, and they're just gonna do that in the background. This new subscription is called Eero Secure, and they're offering things like ad blocking, content filters. You're gonna be able to see some historical data usage, and of course, block and allow certain sites. Plus, they're saying some advanced security options, so we'll have to see what that is. Now, you get a free 30-day trial, here when you hit continue, it's not subscribing you right away to that subscription. You have to go and look at that after. I'm gonna look at the content filters just so that you guys understand what's going on. So we're gonna create a profile that is hopefully working for my kid's computer and my kid's uh, smartphone here that he has in the home and then we should be able to pause things for bedtime. So I'm just gonna call this the kid profile. And now, unfortunately, I have to identify which is his stuff here. So you would have to understand that before you're coming in, but the good news is lots of these are already named. For the purposes of demonstration with one of these profiles or filters, what I'm going to do is choose this phone and then we're gonna try and go to a site after that. So here's the Pixel 5a, that's what I'm using. Now, they say you can only include a, a device in one profile. So if I was to create another profile for say two kids, I couldn't re-include that. What happens from here is we're choosing a profile and then we're choosing who they are, what they will have access to. Now, these are kind of pre-chosen filters that have been built. So if you wanted to get a little more aggressive after this, what you would have to do is actually go down to pre-K instead in the case of my kid. So for now, I'm just gonna choose preteen and they're trying to block all these different things. So we'll see if the social media thing works right away. Definitely a lot of good things being restricted here. This is kind of the YouTube restricted mode. They're including all the search engines with safe search turned on. There's obviously no adult content or violent content. All that's gonna kind of get blocked. They're blocking social media applications and if you'd like, you can block things like shopping at eBay and Etsy. So I like that as well. You could block streaming sites. Plus you could go in here and add a custom site. So let's actually try that out. I'm gonna put in Yahoo. Sorry, anyone who works at Yahoo. We're gonna try it now after that. We can also set some that are allowed. So if there's maybe a site that's being restricted, we can go in and add in a site. Plus, we can block certain apps that are on the phone. So I think definitely I don't want my kid using Twitter. And gosh, Roblox is way too expensive. So I'm going to choose both of those things. We're done the content filters. So let's go try this out. Yeah, I'm still on Twitter, I think. That looks like Twitter to me. I don't know about you guys, but yeah, that looks like Twitter. This site can't be reached. So the block on Yahoo is working immediately but so far the block on Twitter is not working. I'm still getting loads of content there. So seems like the apps are not working super well. 
When we talk about speed, it's important to know that my internet service provider provided me fiber and it's at about 178 megabits per second. So as I talk to you about speed results in my own home, that's kind of the maximum. I showed you where I placed my third Eero point, and it's just a few feet away from my computer. Now, this computer has a wireless network card that works with Wi-Fi 5, and unfortunately, the results here were not very good. But the reason for that was actually because it wasn't connected to the access point sitting right behind my computer. It's very hard to force that too, as you have to basically restart the other two units in your home to kind of force it to get over to that. Before I forced it over to the third Eero point, I decided to wire it into my PC and you can see the massive jump. So this is still with the third access point from Eero being entirely wireless. One of the terms you're probably looking for is what the wired backhaul looks like. And I did wire up my whole PC see all the way up from the basement with two very long cables and did achieve full speed on my PC. So those are gigabit ports and they would provide that or very close to that if you wired a gigabit connection. I also have a Pixel 5a with Wi-Fi 5 on it. Sitting next to the main router with Nest Wi-Fi, you can see that my maximum was about 100 megabits per second, whereas now with the Eero 6 Plus, I'm able to get almost my entire network's speed. But as soon as I moved upstairs next to the third access point, you can see that things average out again. And what was really wild about this testing was the different results I was getting. So there were instances where I got 170 megabits per second, and there were moments where I got 45 megabits per second. So things were really erratic moving throughout my home. Moving to one of my devices with Wi-Fi 6, my Fire Stick 4K Max was actually just across my upstairs into the bedroom, and this was achieving about the same speeds as I was getting on my PC initially. That's because of the placement, and that's because that's what that point was giving me just based on where it was and how the network works. So I wasn't really using the speed of Wi-Fi 6. However, I moved the device into the hallway, kind of into the middle of my home, and now it was about 12 feet away from the fire stick, and there were no local interference sources that could be in the way, and you could see the massive jump that occurred when I managed to get it properly connected to Wi-Fi 6. What you should take from this segment is that Eero doesn't just necessarily give you amazing speeds. You have to work with this network a little bit over time, and I'm not finding tools for moving devices across to the different access points throughout my home. The best speeds are really coming to me when I'm wiring anything in, which should be expected, but the wireless speeds are not necessarily amazing. And what is happening in a lot of cases is my devices are connecting with 2.4 gigahertz and I had no way to enforce that it would jump over to 5 gigahertz because you can't do it in the app and you can't have separate SSIDs for your 2.4 and 5 gigahertz network. A quick statement about latency because those will change based on DNS settings you put in as you go with the Eero routers or you can use their dynamic DNS service which is part of Eero Secure Plus to hopefully help with latency. But in general, latency was extremely low both unloaded and loaded when we're talking about any sort of wiring throughout your network. As soon as you went to wireless, the first mesh hop jumped to about 100 milliseconds when loaded, and the second mesh hop would jump to about 200. So each hop seemed to be adding about 100 to actually 150 milliseconds when the network was heavily loaded. I think we're going through some updates right now, but 
if I go in and I check my internet, every once in a while it's saying it's offline here, but I can run a speed test and check the current speeds and the last time that this was updated. So I'm going to hit a run speed test. Those are exactly the numbers that I expected for the internet speed that I have. That's exactly what's been quoted and I have fiber. So those are exactly right. You can run a speed test and see what's going on. Now, if it shows the little two lines here or the, sorry, the two little, gosh, I don't know what those things are called, but you see them. If it's showing that, that means it's wired, okay? This means it's wireless, and I think right now this one is going through an update. It's not connected. On the main page, if you had to add another device, you could, and here's where you can replace those Eero devices. You can use this button to invite a guest. Uh, this gives you your guest network, the name and the password. You can share a QR code, but you have to turn that guest network on and then you have these opportunities to send to someone. The QR code just means they gotta scan it. But uh, sharing the Wi-Fi details would be just like you do when you tell them your name and password. So I just turned on the guest Wi-Fi network by doing that. There's another place you can find it in the app. If we don't wanna see all of this detail, we can close that up. There are these little cards telling us what we can do and what's maybe gone on on our network. You can close those as you see fit if you don't need any of these things. Then down below, as you organize and you put the device type in for everything, then you will have them all kind of organized. I've added the name there and now the names in the device. Of course, as you go, they're gonna be broken down into the different things. And here are the recently online devices that have now come offline. So I can go into my gateway. This is the one directly connected. There's that wired symbol. Here's the wired data rate, a gigabit per second that we have. And we can see how many devices are directly connected to this. So it's reaching to this Pixel 5a reaching out to my Nest doorbell battery, and then we have a number of wired devices that we may or may not know. We could change the location if we'd like because we've put those into specific rooms, and if the LED light on it is bugging us, you can toggle that off. Now in this case, I'm gonna leave that one on, and we can see the IP address, including uh, both IP4 and IPv6. You can see your software version. Do I want a notification when the network's updated? Mm, yeah, okay, I do. But that's just so I can tell you guys. In the advanced section, we just have some information. We could restart or remove it from our network, which I really like the quick ability to remove it in case we're replacing it in the future. I'm gonna head into one of the nodes here. This is the one in my living room. We can see that it's done through uh, wireless connectivity. Although I do have the two ports on the back so I could be connecting directly to other devices. But you can see right now, I have all Wi-Fi connectivity going on. So I just chose that if any of my devices or anything's connecting to my network, I want a little notification. This has been something very positive with my Google Nest Wi-Fi. Uh, I just know when someone's connected or something has connected in my home. Right up at the top of any of these devices, we have this ability to pause the device very quickly. So if it's not something we want on the network anymore, hit that pause. We can also make adjustments to the name and if we'd like, we can stick it in a profile. So my kid uses the iPad all the time. I've just dropped it into that profile. We can also see if it's connected through five gigahertz or 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi. Unfortunately, it's not telling me if it's Wi-Fi 6 or Wi-Fi 5 or another version uh, AC or AX. So that's a little bit unfortunate. I would have liked to have seen that, but we can go into activity. This is part of the trial. So that's gonna be a really important thing for you. If you're heading into these details and you try and go into the month, you can see that that's part of the trial. It looks like just the week is something that you can look at without that subscription. 
This is something over time that I think will help you kind of structure your network. Um, but I'm betting right now it's not going to change a whole lot unless it's something like a media streamer or a game console that's going to take a lot of bandwidth. Then you might want to tell your Eero system what type of device you have here. So this is a tablet. We can also block the device and see some IP information if we'd like. I'm just gonna show you really quickly how many devices you could get connected to one of these. Now they tell you the maximum is 75 devices. I have 31 connected to one of the mesh nodes at this moment. The smart home radios are a really important aspect to the system as each one contains a Zigbee and a thread radio. Right now, Zigbee is fairly limited because you can only use Amazon's voice assistant application to pair your Zigbee devices. And this limits you to a couple of types of sensors, plus things like bulbs and light switches and smart plugs. Other devices can be a struggle depending on the type. So just don't expect your fancy new Zigbee device to pair directly to this. Do a little research before you go purchasing. To use any of the smart home components, you have to make sure that your Eero system is connected to Amazon's voice assistant. So this is the Miss A app, or that's the name I'm giving their voice assistant right there. And if you didn't use your Amazon account when you first set up your Eero account, then you have to come here into skills, search for the Eero skill, and here it will say, enable or, or something to that effect and then you'll have to put in your Eero account and that will link your Eero routers and your Eero network to Amazon and give you all of these other great features I'm going to show you now. The Amazon Connected Home is a very interesting component of this. We have a smart home hub, voice assistant control, and then the frustration free setup. As I go into the smart home hub, this is where you can discover Zigbee devices and directly connect them to your Eero. So this is a really important component. If you're someone who uses a lot of smart home gear, you can connect them just as you could your Echo. So I have a contact sensor here. It's from Samsung and it's quite an old one. So I no longer have security on my door in case you were wondering about that. I'm actually just factory resetting it here by holding this pin in here and you can see that little light blinking. I'm going to give it a bit. So I'm going to hit the discover Zigbee devices and it wants us to open up the Amazon Miss A application. Now we're on the devices page already. That's where you have to be. You hit the plus up in the top right. You hit add device and now you scroll all the way to the bottom and there's an other, you hit other, and you hit discover devices. Now, if this is close to one of your Eros, that's what would be used in that case to connect to this. That's how you make the pairing, and from there, you can set up the device and use it in routines, especially when it's a sensor like this. So it did find the contact sensor. I'm gonna go ahead and hit set up device. And let's say we wanted to put this in the basement. I'm gonna hit add to group, hit continue, hit done. It's already set up. Now, if I go into views, so it's called first contact sensor. I can go into that device and then we see it's closed. And that should say open, there it goes. It does have a bit of a delay. Now I can go into the settings for that sensor and just make sure that it's actually connected via the Eero 6 Plus. So you can see that it has done that. That's the Zigbee working here. The thread radio is a great inclusion, but only for the future. Right now, the only products that pair with the thread radio on these comes from Nanoleaf within their essential lineup. So I bought a bulb specifically for that and I paid too much money just to test out this feature for you today. 
To find your thread settings, you actually head into settings in the app and then you're going into network settings and here you'll find thread. This is how you can turn on the network, turn it on and off, but in general I would just say turn it on, leave it on because if you turn that off and you've got things connected, you're kind of turning off the whole smart home component of thread. Then you also have a number of pieces of information here. You're probably not going to need those at any time. It's just kind of supposed to work after you've turned it on and done the other aspects that you need to get devices connected. Today I have a Nano Leaf Essentials bulb and the idea is that we can connect this directly to the thread on our Eros. So I've got a download of the app ready to go. I'm gonna create an account. I'm inside of the app now and right away they give us this opportunity to set up a device. But I think for now I'm just gonna hit skip. So I got to hit skip. I've hit continue. Now I can add a home in the app. I'm just going to call it home. I've added a room and now I don't have any devices in the app. You could have went and tried to start the setup process. In the more tab, I'm going to head into devices and I'm going to hit this plus. Now I'm going to use the setup guide to add this A19 and you can see I've turned on my light. Obviously I'm not going to leave it here because you can't see anything on the phone. So I'm gonna use the pair with a QR code. And they're saying use it pair basically from this, but we'll see. Device found, set up in progress. I'm just gonna call this the Nano Leaf. So now I've got a Nano Leaf. Wow, I can even put in a hex number. Okay, so I'm gonna turn that off for a second. Many times when you head to the dashboard or you just go around your bulb that you've just added, you're going to get this kind of a notification that says, hey, you can join this to a thread network. If you don't get that, you can head into more and then there's a thread network here. Again, if you don't get this here, there's another option. So there are quite a number of ways to go about this. You can go to account and here's a connect. But I'm just going to use this join network option. So what it says is enabling thread will automatically move your connection over to thread from Bluetooth, which is what that bulb is living under at the moment. If you have an Eero account, you're putting it there. If you signed in like I did with Amazon, you're gonna hit that. So now it's just going to convert over. There's really nothing else you need to do. It's just telling you, you're all done. You can see they've said, okay, we've moved you over. And now you have a new settings feature for your thread network. You can see all your information and if you want to get any other information, the app and now your device has a number of other sections. So here's the result of doing that. You know, before this was on Bluetooth, and now when I hit those buttons, you can see how quick the control is through thread and through that network. So that's exactly what we want. Amazon talks about their frustration free setup, but there's a caveat to that as well as you have to buy products directly from Amazon and they have to say certified for humans on the product label for them to automatically connect to your Wi-Fi system and Amazon's voice assistant. So it's actually a limited number of products that will use this. From a voice control perspective, Amazon does give you options to use your voice to take things on and off your network or just to pause them. And I really love this option, but I wasn't very successful with it in my own home. And that's because it's based off of Amazon's voice recognition software or what's called your voice profile. The reason I wasn't successful was because for some reason Amazon's voice assistant has lost the ability to recognize me and every time I tried a command they said they couldn't recognize me and therefore couldn't pause the Wi-Fi. Now within the voice assistant settings I can turn on the guest network, turn off status lights and if I wanted to I can pause the Wi-Fi on different names of devices but you can choose the Wi-Fi devices to control with your voice. So in the devices tab, if I head over to the right here, here's my Wi-Fi access. 
this allows me to get started setting up which Wi-Fi devices that are connected to my network I can control with my voice to turn them or take them on and off the network. So it's found everything sitting on my Wi-Fi. I'm gonna try this with my Pixel phone. I'm gonna hit uh, the little check mark there. You could check mark other ones if you'd like, and then I'm gonna hit continue. Now they're giving us the opportunity to create groups of devices. Obviously this name for Pixel 5a that's a little more difficult to get exactly right all the time. So I could say, maybe I'll just call them Brian devices. And I'm going to include my pixel and hit create. The next thing is you don't want anyone walking into your home to be able to control who's attached to your Wi-Fi. So they only want to use people with voice profiles here. So I'm going to hit continue. And now we can choose the people who have voice profiles set up in our account. We can choose them by uh, voice basically to allow them to control the Wi-Fi. Turn off Wi-Fi on Brian devices. Sorry, I don't know who's speaking. <laughs> you can pause the Wi-Fi. Pause Wi-Fi on Brian devices. Sorry, I don't know who's speaking. So that's not working very well either. I'm sure Amazon will fix this, but in the app now under Wi-Fi devices, I can go in and individually control devices or pause them by group. Something that's changed for many of you who used Eros before is the fact that the 6 Plus and the Pro 6E, neither of those will have HomeKit functionality. So don't expect that with these and don't go looking for it and hoping that's going to work for you. So now I'm going to go into the activity tab. This is something you should always have access to. You see your fastest download and upload speeds, your downloaded data broken down by day. These are the days of the week. Plus within your trial of Eero Secure, you can see these different security scans and threat blocks and content filters that have gone on. So you can even see if someone's trying to do something that they were filtered not to do. Although that isn't showing when I tried to go to Yahoo. So yeah, I don't know. In the Discover tab, this is where you can see your Eero Secure. You can learn more about it and you can find out all of these different features. Eero Labs is a beta feature area. You can optimize for conferencing, video conferencing, and gaming, or just really high bandwidth devices. Plus, you can turn on WPA3, which is an upcoming security standard. Heading into settings, these are your account settings. You can go into there, change that. Here's the Wi-Fi name and the Wi-Fi password. We also have the guest network set up here. You can turn it on and off as you see fit, and then you can share your QR code and or the Wi-Fi details. Plus, you can go to the main network if you'd like. The network settings are a big aspect. Obviously, you can see the IP addresses that you have. This is the external one uh, to the internet. Then this is your internal gateway IP address if you ever need that. Whether you want IPv6 turned on or off, you can choose that. And then these are for your internet service provider. So you can change some of the settings there. When you head into the WAN type, you could switch from DHCP over to a static IP if you had that. The next settings are related to how you've structured your network. And if you need some guidance on here, there's lots of great resources on YouTube, but you can set a manual IP address if you want to do that inside of your own home, you can actually change it out here. Plus you can set the subnets that you wanna use, including the mask, and you can set your starting and ending IP addresses. So you could really, structure this within a network if you'd like. For most people, you're just gonna leave it on automatic. Now, if you don't want the gateway to act as a router whatsoever, you can choose bridge here, but you wanna be very careful with that. If you don't have a router upstream of this device, you'd be exposing everything in your network to the outside internet. 
lots of applications or lots of things you might do on your network might require you to port forward. So you head into here, then you choose to add a reservation and see you're able to choose the device. So this will likely happen on things like PCs. This is where you can hit to open a port and now you're putting in the name of the port or really what you're doing in a lot of cases. Then you put in the port number or the range of numbers. You can see how they're doing 3478 to 3480. So if you had to open up a range, put that little dash in the middle, which is sitting here. And then you do need to pick the protocols that are being used for this port forwarding and then you'll hit save. Inside of DNS, you can actually choose to create a custom one. Now this is something I've shown in another video in the past. Here's where it's saying you need to disable secure plus features. So if you don't get that, then you can do a custom DNS, which does help in some cases if you're finding things are a little bit sluggish or if maybe these are not running the right way for your area. There's something called dynamic DNS available on the Eros. It does require Secure Plus, and basically it's going to take your home's IP address and match those DNS settings to it. So it's going to move it over time if it's required. Interesting for Secure Plus, so I don't think you're really going to use that in a lot of cases, or most people won't. UPnP, this is Universal Plug and Play, and this actually does have some security gaps in it. So you may want to turn that off, but a lot of streaming devices and game consoles, they require this in order to work. So for the most part, you're going to leave that on if you want to use those. You can set the time zone and then client steering here. This is basically as you move around your home, do you want your device to switch? And I think you just want to leave that on at almost all times. Here's how you can quickly restart the network. This will be a quick way to just start the Eros again if you're having some struggles. Uh, and if you want to delete the whole network and start again fresh, you can do that here. Given that you're probably using the Eero Pros at this point, you're probably using the Amazon Echo speakers or the Fire TVs. And if you are, I have a set of tips and tricks with your Echoes and a set of tips and tricks with your Fire TVs. Check out those videos and you'll get something that you can do with your Eero Pros and all of those great devices. Otherwise, thanks for watching today. And of course, don't hate, automate.